Have you ever wondered why the friend who's always juggling a million things with a calendar scarier than a horror movie isn't exactly thrilled at the idea of hitting the gym? Well, buckle up, because we're diving into the world of cortisol, or as it's more dramatically known, the stress hormone. Nestled atop your kidneys are these tiny factories called adrenal glands, and their top product, cortisol, a steroid hormone that's about as controversial as pineapple on pizza in the world of fitness. Here's the twist. Cortisol is often cast as the villain in the epic saga of exercise, accused of sabotaging your gains and turning your hard-earned muscle into dust. Sounds like a bit of a drama queen, right? But hold on, it's not all doom and bloom. This hormone is like the unsung hero in the shadows, gearing up your body to battle stress. That's right, without cortisol, you'd probably crumble faster than a cookie in a toddler's grip at the first sign of stress. But wait, there's more. Aside from its starring role in the stress response, cortisol has a few other tricks up its sleeve. It's like the body's own personal regulator, keeping your metabolism in check, putting a lid on inflammation, and making sure your blood sugar levels aren't doing a roller coaster ride. So let's unravel the mystery of cortisol together and find out if it's truly the foe or the unsung hero of our body's complex story. Cortisol, the body's own built-in superhero or supervillain depending on the day, has a pretty diverse job description. Let's dive into what this hormone does, keeping it light and breezy because let's be honest, who needs more stress talking about stress? First off, cortisol is a bit of a control freak in various tissues, especially the liver, fat, and muscles. In the liver, it's like the boss that says, let's turn all that stored glycogen into glucose and keep it moving, folks. This means more sugar in your body, ready for action but it also puts a big do not disturb sign on glycogen production from glucose, keeping those energy levels up. In fat tissues, cortisol is the friend who encourages you to break open the savings account of fatty acids to fuel your energy needs. And in muscles, well, it's a bit ruthless there. Breaking down proteins to make sure you've got enough peptides to keep you going. The gist is, cortisol loves to keep you in a catabolic mode, breaking things down rather than building them up, especially when you're stressed and need that extra energy kick. Now, when the going gets tough and stress levels rise, cortisol ensures that your organs like the liver and muscles don't hog all the glucose. This way, your brain gets a steady supply of sugar to stay sharp during those oh no moments. It's like cortisol is directing traffic, making sure glucose gets where it's needed most. But wait, there's more. Cortisol plays the part of the overprotective friend to your immune system, suppressing it to reduce inflammation, but oops, also upping your chances of catching something nasty. It's a potent immunosuppressant, which is super handy after medical procedures like tissue grafts, ensuring your body doesn't kick out the new addition. In the realm of inflammation and infection, cortisol is a bit of a double agent. It dials down the inflammatory response while also inviting more party crashers like infections because your immune defenses are lower. And bones? Cortisol isn't their best friend. It hinders bone formation, cheering on the cells that break down bone and benching the ones that build it up. So in the grand scheme of things, cortisol is like that frenemy who helps you stay energized and focused during stress, but also makes you a bit more vulnerable and less built. Talk about a complicated character. Now imagine your body operates on a sort of celestial clock, where cortisol, the stress-busting hormone, plays the lead role in a daily show. The star has its own unique schedule, bright and energetic during the day, and then off-duty taking a rest at night. That's right, cortisol's work ethic follows a dineural pattern, peaking when the sun's out and winding down when the moon takes the stage. Now, the behind the scenes of this production involves a trio of directors, the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, and the adrenal gland. Here's how the play unfolds. The hypothalamus, a tiny but mighty part of your brain, kicks things off by sending out corticotropin-releasing hormone. Think of CRH as the morning alarm for the pituitary gland telling it to get up and get at them by releasing ACTH, or adrenocorticotropic hormone. ACTH then takes a trip to the adrenal gland, giving it the clue to release cortisol into the bloodstream. But here's the twist. If cortisol levels start to hit superstar levels, a built-in feedback loop kicks in to avoid an overdose of fame. This loop sends a signal back to the pituitary gland in the hypothalamus, saying, hey, let's dial it back a bit, ensuring that everything stays in harmony. So in essence, your body has this sophisticated mechanism, a sort of hormonal choreography, ensuring that cortisol makes its grand entrance and exit just at the right times, keeping the show running smoothly day in and day out. All right, let's break down the magical journey of cortisol creation. And trust me, it's like following a recipe that starts with cholesterol 
and ends with a hormone that has more mood swings than a reality TV star. So cortisol is this steroid hormone, right? And its starting point is none other than cholesterol. Yes, the very thing your doctor keeps telling you to watch out for is actually the starting block for our stress-busting hero. Now, the path from cholesterol to cortisol isn't a straight highway. It's more like a scenic route with several pit stops. First, cholesterol transforms into a traveler named pregnenolone. Imagine pregnenolone as a backpacker, hopping from one intermediate destination to another, enjoying the sights and sounds of biochemical reactions. Eventually, after a series of adventures or sequential stops, our traveler finally becomes cortisol. It's a bit like turning a pumpkin into a carriage, but instead of a fairy godmother, we've got enzymes. Now, for the setting of this epic journey, the adrenal cortex, which is not a single-layered cake, but a three-layered one, each layer has its own specialty. Starting from the outside, we have the zona glomerulosa, the home of mineralocorticoids. Then moving inwards, there's the zona fasciculata, the layer that's all about glucocorticoids, like our friend cortisol. And finally, the innermost layer, the zona reticularis, which is the cool, laid-back part that deals with the androgens. So in a nutshell, the adrenal cortex is like a bustling marketplace, with each section offering its own unique goods. And in the middle of all this, cortisol is being crafted, ready to take on the world, one stressor at a time. All right, let's break down the superhero moves of cortisol at the molecular level, but let's keep it light and snappy. Think of it as the cortisol for dummies version. Cortisol, being the steroid maverick that it is, has this nifty ability to just waltz through cell membranes like they're not even there. Once inside, it's on the lookout for its dance partner, the intracellular receptor, which is chilling in the cytoplasm. Now, these receptors are a bit clingy. They're usually hanging out onto a heat shock protein, kind of like a molecular security blanket. But when cortisol shows up, it's like, move over blanket, I'm the new partner in town. This causes the heat shock protein to buzz off, allowing cortisol to bind with the receptor. Once these two have paired up, they do a little tango in the nucleus, where they get to work turning on various genes. These genes are the backstage crew that manages the body's glucose metabolism, protein breakdown, and fat utilization. Basically, cortisol walks into the cell and says, let's shake things up a bit, directing the body's energy resources like a boss. But here's the kicker. Too much of a good thing isn't always wonderful. High levels of cortisol in the blood can lead to the drama queen of health issues, Cushing syndrome, which is like the body's over-the-top reaction to too much spotlight. Other culprits for the cortisol spike can be adrenal gland tumors, throwing cortisol production into overdrive, or the use of corticosteroids, which is like giving cortisol an all-access pass to the bloodstream. So while cortisol has its moment of fame in helping your body deal with stress, it's a bit of a diva. Too much presence in the blood and it starts causing trouble, proving that even in molecular biology, balance is key. Alright friends, let's wrap up our whirlwind tour of cortisol the body's very own version of a stress-busting, energy-boosting, and occasionally, trouble-making hormone. If you're taking anything away from our little chat, think of cortisol as the ultimate multitasker of the hormone world. It's like the body's own personal assistant, stepping in during stress to make sure everything runs smoothly, from keeping your energy levels up to putting the brakes on your immune system so it doesn't go overboard. Here's the lowdown. Cortisol is a bit like a gym junkie for your cells, promoting the breakdown of glucose, fat, and protein. This ensures you've got enough fuel in the tank when you're facing down a deadline or running from a saber-toothed tiger, or, you know, just dealing with modern life. And it's not just throwing weight around. Cortisol sneaks into cells to whisper sweet nothings to your DNA, causing all sorts of changes in gene expression. But remember, while cortisol can be your best friend in a pinch, too much of it hanging around can turn into that friend who overstays their welcome, leading to all sorts of drama. So thanks for hanging out and diving into the wild world of cortisol with us. If you found this enlightening, entertaining, or even just a fun distraction, smash that like button and subscribe for more content that'll keep you informed, amused, and maybe even a little amazed. So keep flexing those knowledge muscles and stay glowing with greatness.